Hello, I'm Peter Sammons. I'm Director of the UCL Institute for Risk and Disaster Reduction and Head of Department. Welcome to our virtual open day for the BSc Global Humanitarian Studies Programme. My name is Elan Kelman. I'm 50% here at the UCL Institute for Risk and Disaster Reduction and 50% at the UCL Institute for Global Health with my mandate bringing together health and disaster topics. I'm going to talk giving you a little bit of detail about the programme and at the end of that there'll be an opportunity for you to ask questions and I'll be joined by some of my colleagues and some of our current students. First I'd like to introduce you to the Institute. The Institute for Risk and Disaster Reduction, the IRDR, is 10 years old. We have 12 academic staff and 12 research fellows. We have about 25 PhD students we run three master's programs and have about eight million pounds of current research funding. We have an international staff and student body from over 50 countries. We advise governments internationally, the United Nations, the World Health Organization, London Resilience, and so on. We also lead the UCL Humanitarian Institute. We host the Center for Gender and Disaster, the Centre for Digital Public Health and Emergencies, and the Conflict and Disaster Hub. Let me introduce you to some of my academic colleagues leading the BSc programme. Dr. Poulam Yadav is the programme lead for the BSc Global Humanitarian Studies. She's a social scientist and co-director of the IRDR Centre for Gender and Disaster. Dr. Bias Ahmed is a BSc admissions tutor he is an expert in geospatial analysis, and I'm sure you'll be contacting him shortly. Dr. Jessica Field is the undergraduate tutor. Her, her background is in uh, historical science and is a lecturer in humanitarian studies. What is special about the Institute for Risk and Disaster Reduction is the depth, variety, and breadth. We are almost unique internationally in terms of spanning physical sciences, social sciences, and then professions such as engineering, law, medicine, and social work. The Institute for Risk and Disaster Reduction, the IRDR, has global reach. For instance, we're working on looking at landslide hazard in the Rohingya refugee camps in southeastern Bangladesh. We work on maternal health in Nepal, safer schools in Indonesia, and digital health in Nigeria. The job which I have is such a privilege. I am working with such an incredible variety of talented and committed people to try and make the world a better place. We know that disasters are an immense challenge. We recognize how many hundreds of thousands and millions of lives have been saved by the people dealing with disasters. But we also recognize the sad reality that disasters are continuing. And so we have to continue doing better. What I love about my job is seeing the impact which our fundamental and foundational science can have on the lives of real people. And that includes ourselves. Amongst our staff members, amongst our students, many of them have experienced disasters. Many of them have been involved in humanitarian relief and it affects us all. Some recent research highlights. Professor Patty Koskova, director of the Center for Digital Public Health and Emergencies has recently won the Innovator of the Year Award at the Computing Women in IT Awards for developing an antimicrobial stewardship decision support app to encourage prescribing behaviour in Nigeria. And Dr. Bayez Ahmed, a lecturer in risk and disaster science, his recent paper published this year on cyclone risk assessment of the Cox's Bazaar district and Rohingya refugee camps in southeastern Bangladesh has already had 500 reads in its first month of publication. Why Humanitarian Studies? The BSc Global Humanitarian Studies Programme is unique in the UK. This multidisciplinary programme aims to educate and train future generations of humanitarian leaders in the theory and practice of humanitarian action. You will learn about the political, historical and development context you'll gain an understanding 
of the emergence, impacts and response to humanitarian crises. You'll acquire the critical and analytical research skills grounded in practice. You'll be equipped to anticipate evolving humanitarian threats, manage widening vulnerability and crisis response. So this BSc in Humanitarian Studies was created because we found that the sector was asking for people who had the training at the undergraduate level. They are really looking for an increased professionalization within the area. They want people who've studied it for an extended length of time. So we were responding to the need which the sector was looking for and wanted to give the students a wide background and therefore be able to step into a very wide approach towards the careers in humanitarianism as well as related topics. The program was developed with humanitarian sector employers advising us on key competences and skills required in new recruits to support job prospects of BSc program graduates and also offering placement opportunities. These included the International Organization for Migration, UN Development Program, UN Women, Christian Aid, the Swiss Agency for Development and Cooperation. There were strong recommendations that trained graduates could help to modernize and professionalize the sector with skills, including integrated approaches, coding, data management, GIS, report writing, project management, risk assessment, financial and operational skills, and governance. The program was developed with UCL partners, including the Institute for Global Health, the Department of Statistical Science, the Institute of Education, the School of Management, the Department of Anthropology, and others who are all members of the Humanitarian Institute. So half the program is core. It's fundamentals. It's basically what does humanitarianism mean? What do you need to know about humanitarian studies and situations and how will that apply in any context? These cover inequality, social justice and ethics, humanitarian crises, response and logistics, climate and hazard risk, impacts and adaptation, and international development. But then you get to choose, and there are four streams available, and each student gets to choose two of them for many of the remaining courses, which means that depending on where the student wants to go, how they want to prepare themselves, these options are available as well as further options for elective modules. So coming out of this degree, you have the foundation to go to industry and say, look, I understand what's going on with conflict and disasters. I understand how climate change links to them. I understand what some of the basic data analysis techniques are. I really know and can advise on how management should approach some of these topics. And therefore, the student is well prepared for an industry career. But it's the same in the nonprofit sector. They are dealing with projects. They are dealing with programs. They are really trying to push a prevention agenda to stop humanitarian situations arising. But the political reality is often there is only interest and support afterwards, which means that the foundations which we give will help the student work in that environment in terms of saying, look, we are trying to stop these situations occurring. We also have to be ready to respond. By having the different streams within the course, we are certain that the students will be able to set up and prepare for their future career. The program uses diverse teaching and learning methods. Novel methods include preparing policy briefs, web-based presentations, scenario workshops, and of course the fundamentals of quantitative and qualitative research methods. We are very interested in pushing the fact that learning is not just about sitting in the classroom. Yes, we might call them lectures, but it's actually very interactive. It means that we expect participation, we expect very good questions, but the speaker might not necessarily know the answer, which means that the students have to find the answer or work amongst themselves to have the answers. This also means that part of the learning, part of the education, part of the teaching exchange happens well beyond the classroom. It is not just the tutorials, sessions, lectures and seminars, but we have, for example, many public events. So we hope and expect that our students will attend where members from the public come and they then put their questions to the panels or to the experts. 
a diverse range of assessment and feedback methods reflecting transdisciplinary nature of humanitarian studies are employed. Coursework includes essays, poster presentations, policy briefs, computer programs, modeling, field notes, and so on. I just want to say something about the core humanitarian modules. In year one, these cover global history of humanitarianism, humanitarian crisis response, climate and natural hazard risks, social and geospatial analysis. In year two, conflict and migration, humanitarian planning and logistics, humanitarian policy, and humanitarian research methods. In year three, humanitarian aid economics, gender disaster and conflict, and then there's an independent research project which accounts for half of the third year. Now let's just look at the pathways. The anthropology and social science pathway. In year one, there's the introductory social anthropology. Year two includes social anthropology and material culture, social inequality and mobility, and population studies. Year three, anthropology of war and political sociology. The digital science pathway. In year one, there is logic, computation and language theory and technology for humanitarian studies. In year two, probability and statistics, algorithms, logic and program structure and humanitarian data science. In year three, digital health, epidemics in the era of big data and decision and risk. The management science pathway. In year one, there is understanding management, communication behavior in organizations. In year two, managerial decision-making and business in a competitive environment. In year three, strategic project management, and then there is one management elective. The global health pathway. In year one, global health policy. In year two, health, poverty and development, and global communicable and non-communicable diseases. In year three, conflict humanitarianism and health, and global child health. And part of the program is also going to involve an independent research project. So this is a student's opportunity to say, you know what, maybe I do want to go overseas. Maybe I do want to do my own research on the ground and see for myself and find out what's happening. Or alternatively, maybe it's working with an existing data set to sit on their own, analyzing it and coming up with innovative insights, which are publishable from a scientific perspective, but also very important to change policy and practice. This means that making use of the wide facilities around the university, the very exciting events which happen within our own institute, but also in other institutes and in the university, and ensuring that we take advantage of being within London, one of the best cities in the world, with global connections, with the headquarters of many humanitarian groups, with different levels of government, and with an immense array of private sector people and companies here, so that the students get out of the classroom, work with people who are doing this in practice, and we can facilitate those connections. So learning is 24-7. Learning is lifelong. Yes, there is a lot of classroom time and that's expected, but there has to be so much beyond the classroom to ensure that the students learn, teach and exchange and they're far, far better set up for a humanitarian related career. The IRDR runs a careers fair tailored for its own students. We hold practitioner presentations, humanitarian masterclasses and hold networking events. So we're very fortunate within the Institute for Risk and Disaster Reduction to have these local, national and global networks, to be continually going to meetings, to be continually being on Skype and on Zoom talking to them, as well as tons and tons of emails which come through continually, because we're always writing, we're always publishing, we're always doing in teams. So I personally am continually working with different projects, including people in the private sector, 
people in the nonprofit sector, people in government and other academics. They are continually coming to me saying, you know, I wish I had someone with these skills. Or, you know, we've, we've an opening. Do you have anyone who might be able to take a six month contract or an 18 month contract or even a permanent position? This means if a student comes to me and says, you know what, I really like this organization. There's a good chance that I can support them in contacting people there. I may even know someone personally. Or it may simply be an information interview. Look, can you go and have a coffee, sit down with them, explain to them what's happening within industry, what's happening to them within government, and what are the possible streams? And obviously, there's not a chance that I know all the jobs that are out there. There's not a chance that I know every possible career pathway. But by the fact that I'm working with these people on projects, by the fact that I bring them into the classroom to give teaching, means our networks are continually expanding and are continually being used so that any student can then go to these people and say, please help me, please advise me, or perhaps you're hiring, and here's a chance when I can give you my CV. Various funding options are available, student loans, scholarships and bursaries. UK students whose household incomes fall below a certain level may also be eligible for a bursary or scholarship. UCL offers a selection of scholarships for international students, and the IRDR will award two fee reduction scholarships for international students for £9,000. The scholarship deadline is April 2021. There's more information about this on our website. I would like to thank you for joining me for the presentation of the BSc Global Humanitarian Studies Programme. And now I invite you to join me, my colleagues, some of our current students, so you can have an opportunity to ask questions. Thank you very much.